What is up guys, Psyche here, and welcome to Farms of the Week, where I'll be going over the farms I'm currently in, as well as the farms I'm watching. So if you like the content, please like and subscribe, and leave a comment in the comment section below. So let's get started. All right, so it's a red day, right? You know, let's, let's, let's call it what it is. You know, I'm in pain, you're in pain, you know, we're all in pain, right? At least we have that going for us. You know, we're all, we're all in this pain together. You know, chances are there's gonna be thousands of people watching this video, and you can know that you know, everyone else that's watching it is, you know, has the same mentality, right? And the question is, you know, like, Question is like, Taiki, are you scared? Are you selling? Yada yada yada. And you know, the simplest answer is like, no, I'm I'm not selling, and I'm not really scared, right? I mean, this is just a pullback, right? I mean, if you've been in crypto for a long time, it's like, I mean, yeah, it's it's down 15%. Like, who? What's up? You know, it's like, who cares? Uh, and the reason I feel that way is because for me personally, like my system, at least in crypto, it's pretty simple. I do the re I, I do the damn research. I build a conviction. I build a thesis. I deploy capital and I wait for the thesis to play out, right? And right now, like, I've already deployed my capital and I'm waiting for my thesis to play out. In fact, it's, I mean, it's, it's already played out. However, I still think it has more room to run. And I can go over like why that is. But before I get into that, I just want to kind of go over like the mentality uh, that people should, uh, I guess, think about when like, approaching the crypto markets. Because I think there's days like this is a good time for you to self-reflect on whatever tokens that you're holding, right? Do you actually have conviction on these assets? And like, what is the reason you're holding them in the first place? A good mental model to think about this is hypothetically, let's say you're bag holding some random altcoin, right? It, you're down on your entry. And let's say you have $1,000 in it, right? The question you should ask yourself is, you know, you have $1,000 in there. So hypothetically, if you took out that thousand dollars, right, and you had a fiat, right, you had stable coins or whatever, would you redeploy that thousand dollars back into that coin, right? Because if the answer is no, like why the hell are you holding the coin, right? Why, 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 why are you holding on to it, right? You, you just said that, you know, if you had a thousand dollars, you would not buy that coin, but you have a thousand dollars in that coin. It's like, you know, it, I mean, psychology is a, like a hell of a thing, right? So like, obviously, like when you buy something and it goes down, you, you, you kind of want to like hold on to it, but you know, like, that kind of mental model might help you in reassessing opportunity cost and getting like through like all the all the emotions that you as a person go through, right? We all go through it, right? We all bag hold things. It's whatever, uh, but you know, it's it's not good to keep bag holding things. It's it's okay, right? It's, it's it's a mistake, but you know, if you learn from it, then you know you're just gonna do much better in crypto. Okay, little little lecture there, but let's just go over like why I think um, Avalanche, at least uh, the cycle for Avalanche is not over, right? Because uh, let's be real, we are no longer early in Avalanche, right? Early in Avalanche was when I started covering it mid-August, right? And we were accumulating it back like most of August. But you know, now that it, it like essentially peaked at $75, right? <laughs> That's essentially like when I was before. Uh, anyways, uh, like, we, we are no longer early. Uh, I, don't, I don't think we're late, but we are not early, right? Despite what other influencers might tell you, at least in my opinion, not financial advice, I could be wrong. So the TVL on Avalanche, when I first started covering it, was under $200 million. And I said that when Avi launches, it's gonna get to 10 billion, right? That was a pretty bold call. And so far, I, th I think it's playing out. I mean, this was 4 billion before the market dumped, right? Because TVL is based off of like Bitcoin, ETH, Avalanche, et cetera. So obviously when the price goes down, you know, TVL goes down, right? Crypto is very, very reflexive in that sense. And I get a lot of questions like, why is this figure different from DeFi Llama? Well, DeFi Llama, I don't think they update as frequently as a marker, right? It's a marker.io. You can see the website here. So marker has Banky at 1.9 billion, and they also have V, which is another money market at 300 million, whereas DeFi Lama does not have that. So I think marker is a better way to track TVL. Uh, so, you know, just another tool for you to look into. However, the biggest alpha that I can share with you that I've, all, that I've already shared with you is Bridging data, okay? I think this is the number one thing. Like, th this is the most important data that you should look at if you're considering, like, you know, entering, leaving, selling, buying, you know, like anything about Avalanche, right? Because the idea is that if there are more people bridging into Avalanche than there are bridging out of Avalanche, then like the ecosystem should do well, right? I mean, it's it's like not like it's, it's not rocket science, right? I get I get a lot of requests for TA. I I, I have people sending me like TA, but TA doesn't only really matter, at least in this phase of the cycle, because what matters is how much people are bridging, right? Because if my thesis is that Avalanche is going to hit 10 billion TVL, then 
I need to track that thesis, right? Because that's my thesis, right? My thesis for Avalanche isn't because, you know, it's a Fibonacci replacement or retracement or whatever, right? Like, it's not based on TA, it's based on fundamentals. So I'm more worried about the fundamentals than I am about TA, if that makes sense. And I think this is the best way to track fundamentals. Uh, I mean, fundamentally, they've been super strong, right? So it's like since September 8th, if you don't count today, we've only had one red day on the 9th, right? And every, every, every day else, or every other day, it was essentially green. Today is red, obviously, because it's a red day, and I, I speculate that you know people have to you know I guess bridge some funds back to the Ethereum mainnet to pay back some of the loans on like you know ETH layer one Aave Maker MakerDAO etc. Right, so you know if if the markets weren't red, I suspect this would be green too. But you know like this is this one it's just one red day, right? If we had like three consecutive red days, then I would start to be scared, right? Because then my thesis starts to get wrong, right? So that's my system. Build a thesis track the thesis and see it play out. And uh, also like the one of the reasons, uh, another question I get is like, you know, is, is Avalanche Rush gonna be a sell the news event, right? Because, you know, there's there's like, I mean, people love like, people people love saying that everything is gonna be a sell the news event because it makes them sound smart. Uh, I mean, I, 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 get, I get it, right? Uh, and Avalanche Rush is speculated to launch uh, September 22nd because, I mean, the Avalanche Labs team, even though they've never mentioned it explicitly, they've like dropped all these hints about like, oh yeah, like September 22nd is our an one year anniversary of mainnet, you know, like eyeballs by the COO. Um, and Aave just, the governance proposal for Aave just got approved on the 19th, right? And generally, like, once these things get approved, it takes like a few days for th these things to get deployed. Uh, so, you know, three days after this, it's the 22nd. So it makes sense for, you know, this to happen. If it doesn't launch on the 22nd, it's going to look pretty bad on the Avalanche team uh, because, I mean, they're not really communicating with that well and they've dropped all these hints, etc. And um, about the Saldanus impact, um, I agree with Wayne Gary and sentiment here uh, because, I mean, obviously some things in crypto is a sell the news event, right? Like, I mean, Cardano made it, or sorry, Cardano smart contracts launching and a sell the news event, it, it makes sense, right? Because it's mainly retail driven and people get excited on the way up. And then when smart contracts launch on the 12th, like nothing happens, right? There's, there's nothing, there's no apps that you can't use it. So people like kind of lose self-esteem over that. Um, I, I don't mean to bash on Cardano, I'm just using it as an, ex, uh, as a, as an example, and I'm probably going to deploy capital into Cardano at some point in the future. Um, but anyways, that is different from what's happening with Avalanche Rush, because what is Avalanche Rush? Avalanche Rush is when Ava Labs, right, the, I guess the Avalanche Foundation, is going to throw money into the ecosystem, right? Like, okay, please, like, Taiki, like, use our ecosystem, use our blockchain, I'll give you money. Just, I'll throw you money, please, please use it, right? And they're, they're essentially doing that to everyone. So, you know, that's essentially like why people, I mean, that, that's why I've been like front running this, right? I mean, I suspected that we'll hit $10 billion, so let's just like front run the opportunity. Um, and I don't, it's hard for me to think that, you know, Aave launching, right? And probably locking in at least $5 billion in TVL, as well as, you know, all these other protocols like Kyber coming in with Avalanche Rush. It's gonna bring in liquidity. It's gonna make the league ecosystem more legit. Sorry if you can hear my dog, but you know, I, I really find I, I really find it hard for this to be a salt news event. Uh, my opinion, though. So that being said, let's just go over some farms like Kyber. Uh, so Kyber uh, launched on Avalanche. Um, they have two pools: USDC, a, a stablecoin pool, and an ETH Apex pool. It's actually not that good if you compare it to Trader Joe. So I'm not a huge fan of this. Also. Kyber on Polygon, it was like pretty botched. I mean, it wasn't a botched launch, but it wasn't like a good launch. They also have a lockup on your rewards. So you know, like me personally, I'm not interested. Um, another farm that, you know, I, I think I always talk about this. This is like what I'm in, right? I have all my assets playing on Benki. Uh, it's it's overlooked, it's underlooked. It's not as exciting as providing liquidity. You know, like these yields aren't double digits. However, you know, I'm, I've am i mainly more, I, I've I've mainly been in capital appreciation mode just because, you know, like I think this is the phase where, you know, things just trend up. Um, and when Aave launches, that, that's when I'll be transitioning to more of like a farmer. Uh, at least that's how I expect it. Um, but it's, I think it's overlooked because right now I have my AVAX, Bitcoin ETH here, earning yield. Um, and you can, you know, be paid to borrow, uh, which is a concept that's kind of crazy. So for example, uh, let's just focus on USDC. If you borrow USDC, you pay 6% to Benki, right, as interest rate. However, they'll pay you 10.6% uh, in rewards because you know you're using the protocol, right? This is Avalanche Rush, and uh, 
for now, I'm just using this, but when Aave launches, you know, I'm probably going to transition my funds there because I trust Aave way more than Banky. Not because I don't trust Banky, but because I trust Aave uh, a lot. All right, so now let's dive into the Terra ecosystem as well as Solana, Phantom, uh, Polygon. Yeah, and Solana, Phantom, Polygon. So not much has changed. I just had a price going down a little bit. Uh, my setup has not changed, uh, to be honest, outside of, you know, I kind of pivoted my mirror long farm into the Apollo farm, right? So Apollo is an auto compounder that I'll go into later. However, uh, I will say that, you know, like I did take profits on my mirror tokens. Uh, as mo most of you know, I'm not too bullish to mirror token. I, I think it's a farm token uh, that's that, that I'm going to personally use as my income source, right? And so far I've earned almost $700 just like farming mirror and selling it, which is nice to, uh, because I can take this and put it back into anchor, anchor earn and like be paid 19.5% or something, right? Uh, so, you know, uh, I had funds on Anchor. I had to pay back some of my barred amount uh, because, you know, my liquidation price was like $19, uh, like early in the morning. And, and I, just, I just like want, didn't want to deal with it, right? I'm just going to lower it to $14. Um, all of my barred funds, essentially, or not all, but most of it are in here, uh, earning 19.6%. So, you know, I can easily, whenever I want, uh, wish you all some and then pay back. Let's go over to Apollo. Uh, so... You know, I, like I mentioned, I'm not too bullish on mirror token. Uh, so if there was an auto compounder, I would love to use them, right? Because what an auto compounder does is it would harvest your mirror rewards, split it up 50-50 and redeposit re re it back into the LP position. And yes, there, there is spectrum protocol that, you know, people like. However, like, I, I don't fully trust it because it's, un it's unaudited and the team is anonymous. However, with Apollo, it's also an auto compounder, but they have backing from Pantera, right? A really big VC and Doquan. So if Doquan is putting his name behind it, then I feel comfortable uh, as well as like a, a bunch of other VCs, right? So, you know, it's, so as you can see, my galaxy position is here earning 33%. Uh, you can see this for most other mirror, uh, uh, mirror positions. If you want to like know like how to do this, check out, uh, check out Danku R's video. Hold on, let me, let me just give him a shout out here. Danku, really good channel. He has a video on Apollo. I uh, can't find it right here, right here. So you know, check out his video if you want to know how this works because it's kind of confusing. You have to unstake from Mirror, put it back into TerraSwap, and then redeposit it. Right? It's it's really confusing. So check out his video if you're confused. Uh, okay. And they, right now they have this community farming event, which is you know it's it's a pretty cool way to distribute tokens. So phase one lasts like three days because everyone aped in. Right? This the TVL was like two hundred million. Uh, uh, and phase two has started. Um, in phase one, I collected 42 Apollo tokens. Uh, phase two, I have nine tokens. Essentially, what's happening is uh, uh, instead of like instead of like the mirror rewards being redeposited back into uh, your LP position, your rewards are essentially being sold to buy Apollo at a price of 25 cents. So this is a way for the Apollo team to build up their treasury uh, and also distribute tokens to their community to anyone that wants it. And I, I, I like these community farming events because it makes me feel involved. It makes me feel like you know, I'm not like being dumped on by the VCs and whatever. Uh, so, you know, it's something that you should consider. Uh, and that's what I'm doing on the Terra ecosystem. Okay, so let's talk about Solana because when I made my video with Chris, uh, Chris McCann, about the Solana ecosystem, uh, I liked it and I was going to bridge over. However, this was, like, I mean, a few days after uh, there, was a, there was like a 17 hour outage, right? Um, I mean, I'm still bullish Solana long term, but in the short term, this is not bullish, right? I'm not bear Solana, but this is not bullish, right? In the short term, so I have no interest bridging the Solana right now. Um, and also, like after this happened, people became more bearish, so the APYs went down, right? And you know, these APYs are super reflexive because on the way up, everyone's super excited because the APYs are high, people are buying the farming token, but on the way down. People lose money. People like farm and dump, and then the APYs go down because all the rate, all, all the interest is pay, is being paid out in the farm token, right? So I mean, it's it happens everywhere. It happens all the time. You know, I mean, it's, it's history re repeats everywhere, right? So not interested in Solana right now. In terms of uh, Phantom, uh, right now um, my strategy hasn't changed. Uh, right now I'm still lending out my ETH on Taro uh, on this pool, Spooky Phantom ETH. This is a leveraged yield farming protocol, meaning that you can take your you can take your LP position, use it as collateral, borrow more money against it, and put it back. It's just like two 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 to three x leverage your farm position, right? Uh, I'm not interested in doing that because like that's risky, and I don't think I don't think this is like 
an audited, people think it's safe, but you know, I'm still, you know, kind of cautiously optimistic. Uh, so always your own research, right? I, I don't fully trust this, but you know, I'm still, I'm, I'm just farming on here for the culture. So, you know, I can report back my findings to my community. Um, but what I'm doing is like, I'm not going to leverage yield form, but you know, if these, if these degens and if all these apes want to leverage yield form, I'm happily being the, the, being the lender of ETH, right? Because they, they want to borrow ETH to leverage, leverage yield form. So I'm just going to be their, uh, I guess, be their lender for ETH. And I'm earning 27% uh, at this moment. So it's pretty nice. And, you know, it's, it's scrolling up and down on Phantom, you can earn like, on Phantom, you can earn like 37% here. On USDC, you can earn 58% here. Uh, keep in mind, this is risky, right? I mean, the, the reason these rates are so high is because they're risky, right? If these rates were safe, then everyone would pile in. Uh, so always doing research. Uh, like, yeah, I don't fully trust it, but I'm just in it for the culture. In terms of other Phantom ecosystems, I mentioned that like I, I was not really interested in deploying capital onto Phantom because everything was overextended. Well, with the recent dump, Phantom is like down to almost a dollar. Uh, you know, these valuations are kind of getting more uh, more interesting. And I have also often mentioned that often mentioned that I like Spooky Swap because they have Phantom Foundation rewards. What you can do is you can go to Boo, right? You can stake your Boo into XBoo, which is yielding roughly thirty percent, right? So you get a cut of the transaction fees that Boo generates, and you can take your XBoo and stake it here and earn 17% paid in Phantom. So essentially what's happening here is you can take Boo, which is the number one exchange on Phantom. I like bidding on the number one exchanges. And then you can stake it here to earn 46%, right? Essentially. Uh, so, you know, if Phantom dumps again, I'm probably going to be scooping uh, some Phantom and or Boo up to do this. So this is just something I'm watching. Last thing I want to go over is something that's overlooked and it's always Polygon and Curve. Uh, so for anyone that's new to yield farming, I really encourage people to look into Polygon just because it's the most mature ecosystem and it's the most cheap ecosystem, right? Because it's super, super centralized. Um, and there's nothing wrong. I mean, there's, there's nothing wrong with that, right? I mean, it, it's a trade off, right? If you want, if you want decentralization, you have to pay higher fees. If you want lower fees, you have to go where it's super centralized and it's fine. Uh, it, it is what it is. So the stable pool on a curve isn't that great anymore, right? It's roughly like, you know, 9%, 9.5%. Uh, but I think what's really overlooked by everybody is the HI crypto pool. So this is when you provide, essentially this is a pool of three assets, uh, stable coins, Bitcoin, and ETH. Uh, so you're being exposed to permanent loss, uh, but you're being, but essentially you can deposit your Bitcoin or ETH or stable coins and earn right, roughly like, 20, like 29% on this position. So let, let me just say, like, I mean, I have a video on this. I'll provide, provide a link to this in the description below, you know, uh, like what is HR crypto, but let's just do like a live demo, right? So let's say, you know, uh, let's start with zero here. The pool weight is 33% essentially, right? And in, what impermanent loss is, is like if an asset goes up a lot, then a pool will sell that asset to buy more of the underperforming asset, right? So it's in called impermanent loss. People find it scary. But let me just show you proof on like why I think it's it's not that big a deal, especially when it comes to Bitcoin, ETH, and a stablecoin pool, right? On uh, on Curve. So let's say the worst case scenario, right? Bitcoin doubles, right? Bitcoin doubles, like, like Kumbaya, like everyone's like super excited, and ETH also pumps. E ETH triples, right? Whole, like oh my god, like super bull market. Impermanent loss must be crazy. Oh my god. But in in reality, impermanent loss is like only nine percent, right? And if you're being paid twenty six percent, like who who really cares, right? Um, and on the downside, like it, it also like helps you like buy the dip, I guess, because if Bit if you if you deposit Bitcoin and Bitcoin underperforms, the pool will sell some USDC to buy more Bitcoin, right? Uh, so I'll provide a link to all this in the description below. But you know, it's impermanent loss. I think people get too scared of it. Um, impermanent loss only matters. Uh, I mean, impermanent loss is only a big deal if you're uh, provide providing liquidity for a coin that's gonna go to zero, right? So like. If you if you LP'd for uh, Iron Finance, right? Like impermanent loss, like was like hundred, right? You, you lost it all. Or if you LP LP a token that like goes hundred X, then impermanent loss is like uh, it's pretty wild. So uh, always always keep that in mind. Uh, so yeah, I went over a bunch of ecosystems. Hope this video was useful. Uh, where's the price at now? Okay, I mean it's not too bad. So thank you guys for watching. Have a good day. Have fun farming out there. And yeah, just ask yourself like, do I have the conviction? Right? What is your thesis? Like, what is my conviction? 
and then I think it'll uh, allow you to navigate the crypto market a lot more better. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Have a good one. And check out my private Discord if you wanted to know uh, how I'm navigating the markets. Thank you.